Good to see everybody. Um, if you were not here, like Sophie, I, don't, I think we missed you yesterday. I'm going to give you kind of a rundown of what we did. Um, so I'll do that for everybody. Like Laura and Kat, I don't think we had you guys either. Or maybe we did. No, we did. Maybe we did. I don't remember. It was yesterday. It's too long. But we'll give a recap, and that way um, you'll be able to kind of catch up to where we're at, to where we start in today with color, because we're going to build off what we did yesterday. Does everybody have something of color to use? So I have my my colored pencils. All right. Sophie's got hers. Evie's got some stuff. Nice. All right, we'll tell you what, let's do this. Um, we're gonna roll to beep or not to beep, which is a Chuck Jones film with our friends Wiley Cody and Roadrunner and Creatures, no less. And then we're gonna get started on applying, like how do I, like what does color mean? Kind of working through some little Furby looking things that we're gonna apply some color to. For those of you who remember what Furbies are, you remember what Furbies are, Scott? Furbies are terrible. Yes, I remember Furbies. Yeah, they were Furby, terrible. They are terrible. Um, and then we're going to apply it to our own creature that we started creating yesterday. So, uh, Mr. Conductor, would you mind rolling to beep or not to beep? It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, he just can't catch a break. And if you notice, and I was told this not too long ago, how Chuck would pace his gags is as the sequence went through, each set, each sequence of gags would get half, it would go uh, twice as fast as the ones before. So if you notice how it starts out, it'd be like one, two, three, gag, one, two, three, gag. And then it'd be like one, two, gag, one, two, gag, and then one, 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 one. And he would progress like that. And that's how he kept uh, your interest in it, which is pretty cool. Bring it over here. All right. So let's get into today. And dude. Let's, you got to hit the two top buttons. Tater Tot knows this. Hold on. Hold on a second, people. It's ridiculous. Come on. Right. There you go. Now you're good. So let's get back to color and creatures. So yesterday we did creatures. And for those who were here, we took uh, six creatures. We did a kangaroo, a panda bear, Doberman, pincher, tiger, elephant, and floppy-eared bunny. And we did the realistic kind of breakdown so that we understood what the actual anatomy of the animal was. And then our goal was to take at least two and, no, Tater Todd, it's, it's a total compliment, uh, was to take at least two and create your own creature. So we use kind of like the crudes as a reference with Chris Sanders and his work. Uh, which I would highly recommend you guys checking out. Um, Chris Sanders, you can Google that dude and see all the stuff he's done on Lilo and Stitch and the Crudes and Crudes 2. And all. He's Lion King. He's ridiculously talented. So anyway, um, I had three. I did an elephant, a rabbit, and a tiger. And I know everybody kind of picked some stuff. So if you were here yesterday, um, we're going to pick up from there. If you weren't, we're going to play like this next two minutes is like catch up. So, and I don't mean like, on a hot dog because we don't put ketchup on a hot dog because that's illegal mustard only so what i'm going to do is like sophie and anybody else who wasn't here yesterday out of these six animals that you see here i want you to um, pick at least two you can do all six if you want but pick at least two uh yes uh toast everybody will get a chance to share today um pick at least two and i want you to do a mashup creature right so i want you to build a creature out of two of the six here. And that's where we're gonna start. And then today we're gonna to apply color. So um, we can start with the color. We'll get into the creature color stuff here in a little bit. So if you wanna pop in, like if you hadn't done yesterday's and you wanna do that, I'll give you some time here a little bit when we start doing our main creature because I might redraw him and then add some color. So we've got our, we've got our dudes here. I'm gonna just flip my sheet of paper over and we're gonna get into color. So color means stuff, right? And when um, when we use color, color theory, colors have positives and negatives. And we can balance out kind of the personality and the character of the creature that we're making or character, however that is, right? With how we use color. So for instance, yellow 
which I'm wearing today, has a positives of warm, friendly, um, uh, energetic, right? Its negatives are cowardly, so cowardness, stuff like that. So you kind of got to figure out what you want in the personality of your creature or like today. And that's why, you know, you would pick the colors that you do and you would balance those out. Yes, color means stuff. It's a guide to color theory. <laughs> that's a book. Um, if you've ever seen Guardians of the Galaxy, and you know that when Yondu is going to say something, his second hand goes, he's going to teach stuff, right? So that's me today. Watch Guardians of the Galaxy. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let's get into some color and how this all wraps out. There we go. So we're going to make these little fuzz balls to start, right? Um, so all I want you to do, we're going to drop this in. I'm going to do here is I'm going to have little fuzzball creatures. Remember like when you used to take those little pom pom things and um, they're like little fuzzy balls and you put googly eyes on them. It's exactly what we're going to do here. So what I want you to do is we're going to do six. because We're going to use primary and secondary colors. So I want you to do six. I've got little feet. Six little fuzzballs. And then we're going to give it some googly eyes um, and maybe some antenna. This is it, just six of these dudes. All right, it can be a little rough. It's not really a big deal there. Who else loves Marvel? <laughs> oh, Toast. Uh, Toast, did you see my Stormbreaker? Did I bust out Stormbreaker while you were on the call? Because we could do some stuff. So here's what I want to say. Like we've got these six different little fuzz balls right now. I don't want the eyes necessarily to be all the same. So what I want you to show is maybe some different emotion. So you know that if we have eyes slanted in like, so that's more angry eyes slanted up is kind of scared a little bit freaked out eyebrows, you know, eyes kind of just straight is maybe indifferent. Um, you can kind of pop things any different way. So what I want you to do is I want one to be angry. One is an angry fuzzball. So this dude is no mouth, just, just eyes. Angry, ang oh my goodness, he's fuming. All right, and there we go. One's an angry fuzzball. Uh, the other one is going to be a kind of freaked out fuzzball. This is going to be our cowardly fuzzball. Very tiny irises. And maybe the antenna are a little, a little weak. Okay. Uh, we're going to have like a Marvin the Martian style fuzzball, kind of indifferent, just agitated, not angry, perturbed. Look at that kind of perturbed. We'll make his antenna or her antenna or its antenna a little bit different. Um, all right, and then let's get into let's get into um so if this one's like a cowardly one, this one's just nervous. Kind of shy. Um This one is doubled over in laughter. So this is this is our that's our uh, happy. Well, not happy. We'll just say uh, waking up. This is our waking up fuzzball. This is our overly caffeinated fuzzball. with two different size irises. We'll call him our 
jittery fuzzball. There we go. All right, so six different things, right, we have going on. Uh, now we're gonna apply color to these dudes here to kind of figure out what colors work, right? So if you think of angry, right, you think of hot colors, warm colors, more of like reds, oranges, that kind of thing. Reds have two different meanings. On the positive side, red has um, a connotation of love, right? Um, passion, that kind of thing. On the negative side of things, it's stop, hazard, anger, right? So for our, all intents and purposes, this dude here, we're gonna give him some, he's angry, his fuzz, his hair's angry is angry all right so we want to go we want to go warm tones because if you think about it blue uh, a blue is more confident but it's also depending on the the color blue like if you get into a darker blue it's more stable but it's also drier meaning it's it's not as lively of a personality blue wouldn't make sense with somebody angry neither would purple uh neither would green it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if we're trying to like use color to show emotion so straight coffee, yeah, that's right, man. Straight coffee beans, eat them up. Have you ever chewed coffee beans? I've chewed coffee beans. All right, so I want you to bust out color and I'm gonna go, so I'm using colored pencil and usually what I will do is I will start with a soft layer of my base color. So like my base color in this case is my rouge carmine red. I used to love like the names that they gave crayons cause they were kind of outrageous. All right, so if that's my base, right? That's my base red. Um, I'm gonna go a little darker and a little lighter. So, I'm gonna do some highlights up here in a little bit brighter red because maybe we got a little bit more of a light source up there. So go ahead and give your give your character some dimension. Don't just color solid. And by that I mean if you've got, you know, it's the dude's kind of circular, right? So make it look like there's some dimension to it. Shade a little bit underneath. Like so. And then what I'll do is kind of fade that in a little bit to what I got going here. I'll kind of shade underneath the eyes for the eyebrows. Like so, I might even get in here a little bit and that furrowed brow, shade that a little bit too, right? So give your, give your fuzzball some dimension. Don't just make it a solid color. And then if you're using markers, it's a little bit different. Um, colored pencils, uh, I like to build and layer my color. I can do that a little bit with markers. And I start light to dark, because especially with markers, you can't go, can't really go lighter. You'd have to use like a white pencil if you wanted to show that. My camera is bouncing all over the place. All right. so. Got a little dimension there. There's my, my angry. They all have gray shoes, by the way. Just making a, just making a executive decision. All gray shoes. Maybe he's angry because he doesn't like gray shoes. What he wanted was, like, he wanted uh, zebra print shoes, but we didn't have the budget for that, so he got mad. And I'm like, look, fuzzball, I got about. $2 I can spend on your shoes. You're getting gray shoes. Wasn't thrilled. All right, let's move on to second creature, fuzzball. <laughs> yeah, you do just want leopard shoes, right? I totally agree with that. So if we think of someone who's like cowardly, right? So yellow, like I said, yellow has a couple of different meanings. That's pod positives are warmth, friendliness, um, that kind of thing. It's negatives are more cowardly. So you can see like when things are some a characters in like a scared situation or something like that, you might see more yellows pop up. If you ever heard of the phrase you're going yellow, right? That means you're you're wussing out, you're getting scared. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got three different yellows. I've got a, a bright, like a much brighter yellow. It's a little cooler. I've got kind of a golden yellow and then I've got more of an orange yellow. So what I want you to do is, let's see, we're going to have all the fuzz on this guy going down. There's nothing, no fuzz standing up here because I just freaked out and I'm going to start again with yellow. You almost can't even really see it, except for the fact that it takes my pencil lead and blends it. And then I'll build on top of that. All right, so kind of see how that goes. Again, remember, just give a little bit of dimension, show a little bit of shadow underneath. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing underneath the eyes, like where the eye kind of brow is, if you will, up to the eyebrow, I'll give them some, as a matter of fact, I might even bring that down a little bit around the eyes. There we go. All right. Scared, absolutely cowardly, will not go out, will not adventure out anything, just sits there and does nothing. Okay, we have our indifferent right? Kind of perturbed a little bit. Um, cooler tones, usually. I mean, this character is not angry. It's just maybe frustrated. Um, I'm going to bring in my platform shoes, Tater Tot. You just watch because I have zebra print ones with goldfish in the heel. Don't worry, they're not real, but it's still goldfish. All right. So for this guy, we're going to do something a little bit cooler in uh, like some greens and some maybe some blue. So I'm going to, but I'm not going to use bright green for it because he's not, I'm gonna use more of like an olive green. So, all right, just kind of a little perturbed. Again, not angry. This character's not super social. This character just likes to get mildly offended by anything. All right, green labeled peacock green, that's fine. What, it, think of like a, a bit of a darker green. So don't think of a bright green like, like this, like a lime. Don't go lime green. Stick in like some little bit cooler tones of green, not warmer tones of green. All right, let's see. Do a little shading underneath. This one's, this fuzzball's a little, maybe, maybe he's just perturbed a little bit because he's got smooth hair, like he got wet, right? Somebody soaked him and now all his fuzz is matted down. Okay, so we got kind of that down. Now here's where we're gonna start to experiment with maybe additional colors. So what did I say this one was? Surprise. Let's go with surprise. Uh, nervous. nervous, okay, nervous. So nervous colors, things that are a little unstable, we, we can use a little bit of yellow and um, there's some electricity to it, right? Some energy to it. So you can go a little bit of teal, right? I'm gonna go teal and I'm gonna go yellow. You're like, how's that going to work? Well, I'm going to start with my lighter color first. And I'm going to bring in a little. So when I layer, when I layer on top here, I'm just going real light. I feel like Bob Ross. Not as good as Bob Ross, but I'm just saying, I feel like Bob Ross. Happy little accidents. Oh, everything's a tree. Or in my case, a fuzzball. All right. So this one's uh, nervous, right? Colors changing a bit. Not quite certain of the surroundings. 
This one heard me talk about ketchup on a hot dog and was like, why can't you put ketchup on a hot dog? If you're from Chicago, you know exactly why we don't put ketchup on a hot dog. It's disgusting. All right. And then I'm going to give him a little bit of shading underneath his eyes too. There we go. So we're kind of blending colors. You notice it gets kind of a little lime greenish in there too, which is good. So we're seeing like as we blend colors. Tired, I'm gonna just call this one tired, sleepy, sleepy fuzzball. So purples, um, depending on what kind of purple you have, if you have more of a red purple or more of a blue purple, um, like red purples uh, can be more luxurious, ostentatious, if you will. That's my $10 word for today. Um, you get into more of like blue purples and royalty, right? So while uh, there's some passion elements in a red purple, because we're, we're blending those two, we have, uh, you don't have a purple. That's all right, blend, what I'm gonna have you do is blend red and blue. So if you do not have a purple, I will do this for you right now. If you don't have a purple, take your red and your blue, and here's what I would do. Um, I would sleepy purple or sleepy fuzzball. I would just very lightly start with your red because that's going to be a lighter tone than your blue. So uh, I'm just going to work that in. And then I'm going to go over the top with very lightly. I'm going to go very lightly because it doesn't take a whole lot for this blue to get very dominant. So you notice that even with just that little, not even applying a lot of pressure, that blue starts to kind of dominate a little bit. Who said red and blue make green? Your science teacher? That's why they're teaching science and not art. All right. And then I'm gonna go back over with my red and I'm gonna press a little bit harder. You're gonna need to wait. And that was it. Well, you, they played all the games. You can play a few more. All right. So I'm going to go over the top there. And you can see I'm, I'll, I can start to build kind of like my purple with that. Or do this. And depending on what kind of blue, what kind of red you use, depends on that shade. So. Daddy, right, you need to take that. All right. I'm going to shade underneath here for my sleepy, sleepy fuzzball. And uh, another color too, if I get into like a turquoise-ish can be a bit calming. I might put that under there. Let's give some heavy, heavy eyelids. All right, Toast, just lay layer the best that you can your colors and <laughs> we'll see how it comes out. All right, I'm gonna bust out a turquoise here. There we go. Look at that heavy eyeballs. Okay, sleepiness. All right, and then we're gonna go with overly caffeinated, I chew coffee beans fuzzball. So there's gonna be some electricity to this one, right? Um, we want some energy, some, maybe some warmer colors. So, uh, and, and this one's kind of off his base a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow and some orange. And then I might throw in some lime green also. So I'm kind of sticking in this color palette, which means I'm going to start with yellow because that's going to be my lightest color. And then go ahead and add what you want to do in with orange. Like so.
And we'll get some lime green in there too. All right, I might deepen up my orange a little bit. You can play carnival games until I'm done. No. All right, where I need it. And two, when you're shading also, notice if you use a contrasting color. So if I'm if I'm in my oranges, I'm gonna, um, or my yellows and oranges, I'm gonna bust out some purples and blues. And by doing that, I can, without using just a deeper shade or a deeper tone of that color, I can actually get some pretty robust um, shadows. Do the same thing with this. So we don't, I don't use black to shade unless I've got gray tones. All right, so we've got kind of our lineup, right? What I'm gonna do to add to this one, cause he's more of a serious, um, he's more of a serious fuzzball. So more serious colors are your deeper greens and blues. So I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna add a little bit of like kind of a navy blue to this guy. Think of him like a, like a corporate suit. That's why banks, you tend to see them use colors like deeper blues and greens because they're more stable colors. All right, some shadows underneath. Same thing here. No, he doesn't have a unibrow. This is just, all right, so there we go. Little difference on color. You can kind of tell personalities a little bit. And that's how we can kind of break that stuff out. Also how to layer some colors, especially if you're using colored pencil. Um, you can kind of do the same thing with marker. Just start with your lighter color first and then start to layer on your, your darker tones. It works the same way as like water colors. So kind of have a loose breakdown right now. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is do you have your drawings from yesterday? Those of you who are here. If you do, we're going to bust right into that. All right. So what I want you to do is I'm going to apply color right to my creature. So I still have my creature from yesterday. And I want to think about the kind of personality character traits of this um, rabbit elephant tiger thing and what do i want it to be do i want it to be something a little stoic meaning darker tones blues darker greens do i want there to be some life in it and some personality where i've got maybe a little bit of yellow in there and i'm complementing that with some purple and some teal um you know think along those lines, even in my browns, um, am I using warmer browns or cooler browns if I decide to use that in my character? And we're gonna get going. So Sophie and anybody else who was not here yesterday, think of what you wanna combine. Go ahead and do a quick sketch out of your character and take those elements like, so for instance, in my rabbit, tiger, elephant thing, obviously you can see which characters I did right down the row. But if you chose like a Doberman Pinscher, very um, distinct muscles, you know, and they're the pointy ears, the panda bear, more round in shape, so rounder, friendlier shapes. Um, you got the black and white pattern to it. Kangaroo, you got the tail, you've got the, you know, the triangular shaped head and the arms and just kind of the overall stance, like those legs, big, powerful legs. Um, elephants, tusks, big ears, just size in general. So totally up to you. I'm going to get started with this and it does not have to be your creature does not have to be traditional animal colors, you know, like it's, it's a tiger. So it has to be orange. Sure. It can be if you want it to be, but maybe your character has some like royalty to it. And so we're going to use a little bit of like bluish purples in that. All right. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to go a little off the train here and give my character some 
different unique colors because it's not obviously something you'd find here in real life. Okay. And then even in how you shade that character, remember, you know, so we kind of broke down over here, um, you know, areas, shading areas, um, you know, features, eyebrows, that kind of thing. Keep that same anatomical knowledge that you learn in drawing real life and apply that to your creature when you're shading. Because you're using that, you're using a very similar um, makeup, like anatomical makeup. All right, a little yellow at the top. And then everybody at the end will have a chance to show. Okay. I think there's gonna be a, a royal aspect to my, my tiger stripes are gonna be purple and teal. I have, I have decided this is the way. Please what, let me know when we can talk about Mandalorian. I know some people haven't watched it yet. If you don't care and you're like, oh, no. okay, let's see. Uh, all right, I won't do it. No, I didn't say no. I said, let's do it now. Oh, let's do it now. Okay. Just don't want to spoil it for, for anybody who has not seen it that wants to see it. Obviously, you know, you would know that Baby Yoda is a thing that's been out now for a while. So we're not giving any spoilers away by saying Baby Yoda. So, too, if you think of characters like that, right, Yoda's green. Why would Yoda be green? Well, green is also a color for wisdom. And when you get into, like, the blue or purples, it has kind of a, it can carry that same kind of connotation. All right, so we've got some purple on the ears. All right, before I get into season two, does anybody not want to talk about it because it, we would spoil it? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay. Says Evie, don't, please. All right, Evie hasn't seen it yet. All right. So the nice thing about doing fantasy creatures, right, is it, you can really pick any color combination you want. And what I like about that is kind of what we just touched on a little bit in meanings of color. You can get pretty exaggerated with it. Oh, Toast has a whole other set of pencils. There you go, man. All right. So keep in mind the dimension. So how do you, you know, like curvature of features, shadows underneath. Again, I'm just building color in. And then two, if you notice kind of like I'm not real specific on my light source on this, but you can have the, if the, you've got warmer light coming from one side, maybe the backlighting of that you're putting in is a little cooler. So maybe it's in a, a, a bluish tone or the light from the front is more of like your yellows and your oranges. That gives a little, that gives it some contrast. All right. So does anybody have a favorite, like a favorite all time mashup? If, if this if this creature did, if this fantasy creature did exist, you would want this for sure. Owl bear. Oh, which one? Owl bear. <laughs> all right, an owl bear, nice.
I would say a, a penguin mixed with a job of the hut. That would be interesting. So would it be like Jabba the Hutt with like a tuxedo style? Like how do you envision that working? What what elements would you bring in from Jabba the Hutt and the and the and a penguin to make the mashup? Maybe like little penguin waddling legs with uh Jabba's head. <laughs> All right, that could totally work. I want to work on that this weekend. You should work on that this weekend. Jabba the Penguin. Guys, out. You're going to have to wait until I'm done. All right. I'm going to give a little bit of warm light here to the front. And so notice too, um, for contrast, I'm going to get a little bit darker under here so that my ears in the front kind of it the ears come forward, the back pushes his like tail end pushes back a little bit. And for that, I'm gonna go a little bit darker blue. Here, you're gonna have to wait. All right, Hunter, take that buddy. Take, thank you. All right. Leopard monkey, okay. I kind of, I kind of almost want something that could fly too, because I would want to ride it. So it's got like to be big. I'm not saying like elephant big, but I definitely want to ride it and like fly ride it, not just ride it across the ground, because that's cool and all, but flying would be way better. Would your Java the penguin fly, um, Scott? No, I, I feel like that would be ridiculous. Well, I know, but it's a fan. <laughs> it's totally possible. He's he's a little top heavy with his big head. <laughs> At least that's how I'm imagining it. I'll, I'll work on it. I'll draw it this weekend. All right, I want to see it next week when we get into it because I think next week is uh, sci-fi creatures. So, perfect. Okay, I would, I would, I think that would fit perfect with Job, Java the penguin would fit right in with that. Maybe I could put like a little propeller beanie on so he could actually fly. <laughs> yes. <sighs> All right. Again, I'm layering my color right so i'm not using black at all to shade i'm using contrasting colors there's a monet exhibit that's here in chicago that i'm going to go see because i love monet and if you ever get a chance to like even if you just look it up online if you ever get a chance to see his stuff in person the way he uses color is outrageous and I remember just being absolutely stunned when I saw a Monet in person for the first time. Haystacks is what I saw. All right. So. Not right now. All right. So add some teal. Teal stripes for my elephant tiger bunny. I would also like my animal to have a pouch because I think it'd be like a backpack, like my buddy, the animal backpack. How convenient would that be? The answer is extremely. Okay. So. I'm going to give a little lighter yellow on the top. How is your creature coming along? Is anybody freaking out? Toast found an olive green in her set of pencils. Nice. That'll make it a little easier. All right. Okay. 
So remember, layering is great for especially colored pencils. You can build up color really well that way. Um, I kind of feel like if I go orange, it's going to be too much. We're going to go golden. There we go. So the whole I think, point, yes. I think Kat would like to share. Absolutely. Um, I, it's not necessarily related to our creatures, but I thought if I could, I'd like to share. Sure. Um, so, uh, camera turn around. There you go. Ooh, look at that. So tell me about that character. Um, it's actually a redesign of my butterfly girl character, Grace. Love it. Nice job. And I like what you did with the hair. So are those long braids? Mm-hmm. They're kind of long braid antennae because okay. she's a butterfly girl. Nice. She has some kind of goat or something in her, too, because she's furry now. Uh -huh. Unexplained, because I don't know. I haven't decided yet. All right. That's okay. So are you inking that, or how do you envision you doing in the final? I'll probably do it in digital art. Okay. Maybe I'll ink it, but I tend to mess things up when I ink them, honestly. <laughs> but you did so well last week. I thought you did a very good job. All right. Well, here's Tater Tot. Tater Tot. So I took it away from the panda a bit, but I really like how it turned out. So Ooh, yeah. Look at that. I love the oranges. You, you did a Doberman kangaroo um what was the other animal it was a panda that was the uh, other one but i like you i mean you got a lot of fur in it and if you think about it a doberman and a kangaroo aren't super furry but you can see that that your creature there has a lot of like fluff uh, fur like it's soft so maybe yeah. that's the maybe that's the part of the panda you're pulling in yeah i really like the color combination so thank I, you yeah absolutely all right if anybody else wants to pop in as we're doing our fantasy creatures, um, you can you can raise your hand if you want, or just unmute yourself. It's probably easier. All right. So I'm going to have a little bit of purple creeping into my teal. So start to change a little color and then I'm going to leave some just white. So I like white around the eyes. I like white around the muzzle and then I like the white paws. Grant would like to share. Absolutely. Go for it, Grant. That's not me. Look at that. That's awesome. You did a great job, dude. I love the color combo. Yes. Yesterday I drawed it, remember today I colored it. I know, I, I love what you did yesterday. I thought your character was pretty cool, man. And you just, oh, I love your fuzzballs. Can I see the fuzzballs too one more time? Look at that. Wow. Nicely done. Yeah, I did that. Nicely done. Can I show? Thank, thank you, Grant, absolutely. Was that? I, I think it was Sophie. Oh, sorry. All right, Sophie. Okay, can I show my fuzz balls first, though? Absolutely, you can. Oh, one second. Okay. Okay, then one second. Here we go. Um. <laughs> Those came out great. I love it. This one's made 
angry because that one has zebra striped shoes and that's why he's really worried about it. I, hey, way to tell a story with that one. And this one doesn't even have feet, so. And then we that one, he's upset because he has purple shoes and he doesn't like purple. And that one's going to fall asleep to his bunny slippers. Oh, that's awesome. I love the, I'm just seeing that now. I love the ears on the bunny slippers too. Well done. Way to make a story out of that. Impressive, man. Yay. Okay. Um, then I drew. It looked really ugly, but this is Jabba the Penguin. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love That's pretty that. much how I envisioned it. Right? I love that. That Boy, is awesome. So, is, I, go ahead. You go ahead, Scott. That's. Uh, I'm thinking I don't even have to do it this weekend because Sophie already drew it for me. He looks oh, a little flabby, though. That's all right. I think that's, that's hilarious. Awesome. Way to go. That's pretty I like, funny. I like the elements that you brought in with each. So, is, is Java, like, is the hat, is he going to have, is it like all black and white suit like a penguin, or is there some, do you ask? Yeah, it's probably suit? black and white. All right. Wow, that's really good. Thank that's you. Good, dude. Absolutely. All right. Toast would like Toast. to share? Toast, absolutely. Um, so I'm not done with the head coloring yet, but I did a panda, wait, and an um, elephant, but let me get to the page where I did the head. Okay. Where are they? Oh, here. <laughs> I, I didn't have a purple at the time, so that one looks scabby. Uh, no, I can, t I, it looks like a reddish purple to me. I think you did fine. I dig it, man. I love the shading too on those and what you have going with the eyeballs. Very nice. Okay, now let me it. It's like a color changing. Oh yeah. Kind of like a chameleon penguin. You ever seen the chameleon paint jobs on cars where that changes colors before your eyes? Yeah. That's cool. Nice job on the elephant, man. The panda hint. I'll, I would take a panda elephant. That totally makes sense to me. Very cool. All right. I'm going to touch up a couple of things here. So I'm, I'm pretty much almost done with my color. I'm going to give the, some darker tips maybe to his ears. So maybe this is a dark gray. Like so, I'm gonna give it a little shading. All right, there we go. I'll probably just give a little definition to the feet. All right, before we were done here in a couple minutes, before we wrap, is there anybody else that wants to show what they've got so far? You don't have to be done with it yet. Just kind of where you're at with it. And if not, that's fine. Okay, so there's my, I'll color this in a little. And Heather Rose would like to share. Yeah, man, absolutely. See what you got, ladies. Ooh, look at that. So it kind of reminds me of an Okapi a little bit. You know what an Okapi is? Yeah. It's like a horse zebra stripes. It's it's pretty darn cool. That's what it, it reminds me of an Okapi. That's cool, man. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a tiger elephant. Look at that. Nice job. I like the other two characters that you have on your sheet too. Thank you. Yeah, man, absolutely. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to give a, all right, if you're ever outlining, and we did this last month for Ink Camp, you know that you don't have to, you don't have to have a, you don't have to have a solid line going around the entire thing. You can leave a little bit for the eye to connect. So even in here, it's got a thicker line here, and then it kind of trails off a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing up here where it's just going to trail, all right? And it gives a little bit of weight to the object that you're, drawing so i'm gonna do the same thing on this side all right i'm gonna let that trail off some 
So I'm going to keep my tail kind of light for the most part, and it'll be a little heavier line underneath. All right. Voila. There we go. So zoom out a little bit here. So uh, first week, animals, land animals into fantasy creatures. I think you guys did a phenomenal job. I love the construction of your characters. Even in this, when we like, this is super important. But remember, the better you, the better you get at this, the better you get at stuff like this, because you're able to understand anatomy and then how to manipulate that to create something a little bit different that still has that believability. Chuck Jones was big on believability. Um, which is why even when you see Bugs Bunny and uh, Daffy Duck, while they, they are ducks and rabbits, they do have kind of that anatomical structure of a human. So it makes it more believable. So uh, week one, remember if you've got your stuff done, the last thing that you should do is, I know I signed it up here, is sign a page. So we'll just label this so I keep it as fantasy creatures. And Evie would like to share too. Absolutely, please do, Evie. Okay. Um, this I was I drew this earlier, but this. Ooh! Is can you hold that up a little closer? Nice. Love the construction, man. Thank you. Absolutely. So, is this kind of in that same line of characters you you like to create? Yeah. Nice. My new characters. Yeah, dude. Looks like it fits right in that world. Thank you. Uh huh. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Any, I'm going to add a little, even though it's white, I'm going to add a little bit of shading here for fur, maybe under his nose. And we'll give everybody one more minute if they want to show something um, to give you an idea. So, Mike Funt is on tomorrow. And the dude, I love his stuff. So if you get a chance, definitely check out Mike's class tomorrow. It ties right in with this. And he's doing all kinds of different things for this month in November, um, which I find fascinating. And then next week, we will be back on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we are getting into, I believe, sea creatures into sci-fi. So drawing sea creatures, getting the anatomy down um, so that we understand that. And then how to manipulate that and create sci-fi creatures out of sea creatures, uh, which means we can weaponize them, we can put stuff, they can be wearing whatever, right? The whole idea is like a sci-fi thing. So how do we take, um, so we're talking Star Wars, right? Like if we talk the original trilogy and you have the bounty hunters and those weird looking creatures, I mean, they got weird creatures all over the place, but they're taking what they know from life and then they're manipulating that to something else. So we're going to get into that. Um, I encourage you all to keep your drawings. Don't ever throw that stuff away because it's cool to see how far you've come, you know, as you look even a month or two months from now. And I can totally tell off all of you peeps that have been with me since like March and April, um, you all have gotten better in what you're doing. And I think it's absolutely fascinating. So I'm going to wrap today. Um, I hope you guys have a great Thursday evening. Um, check out Mike Funt tomorrow because he's a blast and it's hilarious and it's good to work your brain and kind of get things moving there. Uh, and then we will, and then I will see you guys next Monday or Tuesday, one of those two things. The classes will be live on Sunday. All right, dudes, have a good one. Take Bye. care. Bye. Keep drawing. Bye. 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 Thank you. Later, dude.